In this video, I'm going to take you through five features that I think are worth upgrading to Resolve Studio for. Now, if you are new to Resolve or new to editing in general, then you're going to want to stay until the end. The first effect I want to focus on is film grain. This is pretty straightforward. It's film grain. It comes with a few presets for 8mm, 16mm and 35mm, but also allows you to get incredibly in depth and customize your grain, how it looks to however you want it to look. That being said, this isn't the most in-depth grain effect there is. There are plenty of third-party apps like Dehancer that allow you to get really granular with your grain. But as someone who mostly just uses it for videos on social media, it's good enough. What is kind of crazy though, is that Premiere doesn't have built-in grain yet. Why? It's just, it's grain. Just do it. Now, in the free version of Resolve, there are a lot of open effects that are available to you, but the studio version has so many others that are so worth it. So many, in fact, that I genuinely couldn't even nail them all. I couldn't. Well, actually, I could just have my editor put them up on screen now. So, here you go. Um, I'm obviously the editor as well. So, I'm just going to put it up on screen for you uh, in a second. But first, I'm editing this entire video using the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. And I've been enjoying doing so. And if you want to see my full review of this, then make sure to subscribe. Because it's coming out soon. But um, anyway, here's all the effects. Okay, I'm gonna go back editing. Next one is analog damage. This is hands down one of my favorite open effects and legit the best VHS emulation I've ever seen in a program. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you may have noticed me using this effect because <laughs> I'm not subtle about it. And like film grain, it comes with a number of presets that are available. Some look excellent, some look just okay, but where the real magic lies is in the custom settings. You can dig through and get any kind of look you could ever even want. There are so many settings that even though I've used this effect a ton, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. And the last of the open effects I wanna talk about is halation. Now, if you don't know what halation is, that's fine. It's pretty much just the fuzzy little edges that appear in highlights on analog film. Now, just like analog damage, this is effect I use a lot. And it's also an effect that I have seen being used a lot, mostly on like cinematography talk. So it's a little bit overdone right now. That being said, I love it. And so you can see this is an image with halation. This is it without, with, without. If you're serious about what you shoot or your cinematography, then it's a best practice to turn the noise reduction on your camera all the way down. That way you have the most control of your image in post and you don't have to worry about the noise reduction in camera making your image look all crappy. And so that's where noise reduction in Resolve comes in handy. Now, I don't use noise reduction a ton on my YouTube videos because it can be pretty heavy on the system, but when I'm color grading any sort of films, shorts, or documentaries, basically anything that's gonna be shown on a much larger screen, then 100% I'm using noise reduction because when it's blown up that big, it's noticeable. But let's just take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Envato. I've used Envato a ton of times over the years in various projects and it's one of the first places that I go to look when I'm searching for creative assets. Envato Market is the place to go if you're looking for everything from stock music and video to video templates, fonts, 3D files, web templates, and even code. Anything you'd need for a creative project, Envato Market probably has it. Or for a monthly subscription, you can access everything Envato has to offer through Envato Elements and save yourself time and money by using what they have to offer. 
So thank you once again to Envato for sponsoring this video. As someone who genuinely uses it, it means so much. But if you want to check out everything Envato has for yourself, then use the link in the description. Thanks again to Envato and let's get back to the video. As someone who works in horizontal and vertical formats a lot, this feature has saved me so much time. It allows you to reframe horizontal footage into a vertical fucking thing. Oh, yeah. It allows you to reframe horizontal footage into a vertical frame or square frame or any kind of frame you want automatically and seamlessly keeping your subject in frame. Now you can do this automatically, like I said, or you can choose a point for it to track instead. Now, most consumer cameras shoot in an 8-bit codec. This is pretty standard, but doesn't allow for a ton of color manipulation. Now, a lot of prosumer cameras and things that are coming out nowadays shoot in 10-bit. Everything from mirrorless cameras and GoPros to even smartphones. So if you're expecting to do a heavy grade or if you're working with log footage, then you're gonna wanna be shooting in a 10-bit codec so you have the flexibility to change and alter the colors as much as you want without the image falling to pieces. So if you're working with 10-bit H.264 or H.26, H, 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 H. In Ireland, we say the H, it's H. I'm in Canada now where they say H and I don't like that I just said that. This is gonna seem like the most niche addition to the list, but this is an absolute sleeper hit and has saved my arse multiple times. All it does is take an existing edited video and creates cuts where it detects cuts in that video. So you're left with a video that has been cut up into the individual shots. Now, of course, you can do this manually if need be, but it can take a long time. And so for that, it's worth it. What are we doing? And so for that, it's worth it. And so for that, it's worth it. I think there's like a limiter on there. That's cool. Okay, sorry, audio. Ooh, okay. So is there anything you may have noticed in common with all the features that I named? Well, they're all mostly professional features. Either features that you'd need to handle specific camera files or features that save you time. But what I'm getting at is that Resolve Studio is kind of for professionals. Now, I'm not trying to gatekeep, that's not the intention, but if you're someone like me, then it makes total sense to own. You see, I got Resolve Studio initially back in 2018 to handle the 10-bit H.264 files, H.264 files, from my Panasonic EVA-1, which is like a big professional cinema camera. If you are an amateur or just starting out, nothing wrong with it, but it basically means I don't think you need to get Resolve Studio, at least not right away. I think Resolve Studio is absolutely brilliant and worth 100% of the money for what I do. And at just $295 for a lifetime license, as in not a subscription, you know who I'm talking to, you know it, it is so worth it. But if that's a lot of money for you, then just don't sweat it because the free version of Resolve will get you 99% of the way there. It's still so stacked with a full-on editing system, audio production system, color grading as well. It is just unbelievable for a free program. If you are an amateur or you're just starting out, then I really hope this video has helped you a little and helped inform you on your decision. Let me know down in the comments if it has, any thoughts or questions you might have about Resolve or Resolve Studio, I would be more than happy to answer them for you. My name is Robin, and I'll see you in the next one. Are we still rolling? Yes, thank God. Okay, cut there. And cut there. I've been hurt before inside you inside me. Pulling on my heart, all the strings will fly.